Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting and informative episode on My Beat Goes On. As always, my name is Chris, and I will be your host today. And today we are going to part two of our Stages of Heart Failure series. And today, for congestive heart failure, it'll be at stage B. This one is a relatively popular, I guess for lack of better words, stage. There's a lot of people in it. There's also a lot of people that have it and probably don't even know it yet. Just because of certain things which we'll go over here in a little bit. So, stage B. Like stage A, stage B is also considered pre-heart failure. However, this stage cannot be reversed. And the next statement says why. And it's because you must be diagnosed with a ventricular dysfunction or structural damage to the heart. And this is usually accompanied by a reduced ejection fraction. Now when I say people don't know they're in this stage, it's just because they haven't had that diagnosis. So you can still be in this stage but not be diagnosed with it, except you won't have the diagnosis of, this, of being in stage B because you don't know you have heart problems yet. And the reason of this is because of the next statement that says, people have yet to experience symptoms of heart failure, which would be like the edema or swelling, um, increased fatigue, exercise intolerance, uh, stuff like that, shortness of breath, all that not so good stuff, I guess, that people experience with heart failure. So that's why this one can kind of be a little bit, you know, tricky to figure out that you have and you might not ever really know you do unless you see the appropriate doctor to get the test for it. But technically, for this stage, you don't have to have any of the conditions of stage A, like the hypertension, high blood pressure, anything like that, but you probably do. Most people, it's unless it's probably a genetic thing, you probably don't really have a reason to have stage B. And the conditions of stage B, they can be very obvious or they can be totally missed by a doctor. But like I say, this isn't his or her fault. I mean, your doctor, chances are you're seeing your primary care. They don't always look for all this stuff. I mean, they do look for signs and symptoms, but if you don't have any, they have no reason to look for it. Uh, some of the obvious ones at the end here, it shows heart attack. Obviously, if you have a heart attack, you know that you've got something going on with your heart. And unless you're super lucky and you did not get any damage, which, as far as I know, is near impossible to get zero damage with a heart attack, it's going to put you pretty much in stage B. Uh, progression of a condition of stage A can be easily missed, as damage is done to the heart, like I said, but no symptoms make it apparent for further testing. So if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you could end up with, say, coronary artery disease, which can, over time, if you don't have a heart attack, can cause weakening of the heart. Therefore, you can progress to stage B, but if you don't have any symptoms, you're probably not going to a cardiologist and you're not getting the test done, so you might not know about it. But, it's like I said, it's not your doctor's fault. If you want to blame anybody, I'd blame insurance companies, especially if you're in America, because they won't let you do anything to get better it seems like which is a whole nother topic I'm not even going to get into that but for all of you with this going on you know how insurance companies are and how they hold us back from getting better uh, some of the treatments of stage A or stage B I should say um, all the treatments listed in stage A that you're currently on you'll continue and you might have to add some new stuff that your physician orders uh, but stage B this is when you start to get into a lot more of the personalized diets and exercises and this all will depend on your condition and medication you're taking so if you don't have the same thing as you know the next person that's okay because you really need something more tailored to yourself and diet exercise we're gonna have some episodes on that and you'll see what I mean by you know this personalized instead of just kind of a blanket diet that people seem to want to push on you if you had a heart attack and your EF is 40 or less, then you'll probably get prescribed a beta blocker, and those end in OLOL. -L -L. Typically, there's a few that don't, but generally they're going to end in that, so you know which one that is if you are taking it. And they lower your blood pressure. Uh, some people are more sensitive to the blood pressure than others, 
But more importantly, this drug is designed to help your heart beat stronger and more efficiently. And especially those with a higher resting heart rate, this can bring that down into a more normal level, which really helps in the long run for keeping your heart as strong and healthy as possible. You could also be prescribed an aldosterone antagonist, which is just simply known as a diuretic, or some people just call it their water pill. Uh, this is, in this stage, it's more of a preventative medication since you don't have the edema or swelling going on. And this is to keep your heart from getting weaker and becoming enlarged. Uh, this would be due to the blood pressure. People use uh, diuretics for blood pressure sometimes. So it's more for that. But this drug is more commonly prescribed and used in stage C, which we'll get into the next episode. And you could also have some surgical interventions at this time. Uh, you could get an angioplasty, and that could come along with a stent placement. And for those of you who don't know that angioplasty is, that's kind of where they stick the catheter either through your wrist or your groin area. They go up, find a part of your, like the artery in your vein, or the artery in your heart that has some form of, you know, half blockage. It's got some buildup in it, some of that plaque, and they'll use a balloon, blow it up, and squish that all to the sides and open your artery back up. And this usually will come with a stent placement, but, you know, people can choose not to have a stent if they don't want to. Uh, we'll get into this in another episode, but, you know, when you get a stent, you got extra medications and all that stuff. But just so you know, you can have those. You can get an ICD placed which that's just simply preventative for if you're to go into like a lethal rhythm like uh, V-fib. So this is just to help your heart kick back out of it if it can't do it on its own. Uh, this is usually done if your ejection fraction is 35% or less. So if you're above that, you probably won't have to worry about an ICD. You could also get a pacemaker, and then sometimes those double with ICDs, and they probably will. Especially if you have all this going on, they're going to want to double one up. So you can get a pacemaker, and that'll just help your bar heart beat at regular rhythms, at regular rates. It'll regulate the rate depending on how much you actually need it. And it's also used to help kick your heart out of, you know, non-lethal rhythms that make your heart go fast. So you get that option, you know, discuss it and decide if it's best for you. And you could get a heart valve repair or replacement, which, you know, if you need those, it probably isn't a bad idea to go ahead and do that. There's a couple different options on those, and we'll have an episode on those in the future. But that's an option you could have, so just discuss that with your doctor. Things to keep in mind with stage B. Uh, this is pretty important, so you want to really remember these is that first one, other than medications you're on, you really don't have any reminders that you're sick. You don't have any symptoms. You probably don't feel like you're sick. You technically don't have any symptoms. So sometimes you think, or you can let it go, you know, in the back of your head that, you know, you know you have this condition, but you feel fine, so maybe I'm okay. But you don't want to fall into that mindset that you are better without your doctor telling you so. Because this can get you in a lot of trouble and this can actually progress you quicker. And in, you know, in the long run, it can actually shorten your lifespan. So you know, keep in mind that you do have this condition and keep yourself motivated to stay symptom free. If we sit there and think that we're okay, we might go back to an old, life, old lifestyle. We'll maybe get lazy, stop the exercising as much slack on the diet and that's not something you want to do you want to keep it you know in the foreground that you do have this condition it's not bad to remind yourself it's actually good to keep this in mind but remember that you're also in a good place right now because you don't have any symptoms and you want to stay that way and lastly you need to enjoy life if you're going to sit there you know you want to keep reminding yourself of this condition just so you stay motivated but you don't want to do it to the point where you're getting yourself down. And if you do, you need to talk to your doctor and see about possibly getting some antidepressants or maybe some therapy, just so you have some people to talk to. And now we're on the oh-so-amazing part of questions to ask your doctor. The first one, obviously, you can ask them, am I in stage B heart failure? 
which if you have most of this going on, they'll probably say yes. And that's okay because you want to know the truth. Uh, the next one, what diet and exercise regimen should I follow? And of course, they're going to give you probably a traditional diet. The exercise might be a little different. But the diet, whatever they give you, they want to follow. You follow that, you'll probably have a follow-up in six months, some lab work. You know, and then tweak your diet from there, make some adjustments as needed. But always take their recommendation just because they know you the best and they know what works the best. And then, you know, do your own research on it and, you know, do what you need to do to help yourself and work with your doctor and any changes you might want to make on these. Next one is what medication should I be taking? You always want to know, especially if you had a heart attack and your ejection fraction's low, but you don't have any symptoms. You know, your doctor's probably going to automatically put you on a beta blocker. That's pretty common practice, but... You know, it doesn't hurt to check up and make sure you are getting everything that you need to stay as healthy as possible. With the medications, you want to ask, what negative symptoms should I be aware of with X medication? Now, should I worry about standing up too quickly if I'm on a blood pressure medicine? How should I stand up if I'm starting to feel dizzy? Should I stay sitting back down? Do I need to call an ambulance? All that stuff. So make sure you know everything about your medication because this will definitely help you stay healthier and not have any accidents, any falls, anything like that that you could hurt yourself. The next one is what symptoms should I look for that would put me in stage C? Which you can also look at our next episode. We'll have all those listed for you. But, you know, if you're going to your doctor now or you haven't watched that episode or you don't want to watch that episode, then this is a good question to ask him. What issues require a call to you for help before my next appointment? So you want to know what should I call the doctor for, what's going on that I may need to actually get their advice, you know, get some new medication, get an increase in medication. This is stuff you want to know. And to piggyback on that, what issues require a trip to the emergency department? Very important. You don't want to let yourself sit at home and get into more trouble than necessary and I know that co-pays in emergency departments are expensive and they waste time, but you know, none of that stuff matters if you're not alive anymore. So find out what you need to do or what hap has to happen for you to go to the emergency department. Uh, next one you want to know is how frequently should my appointments be? And that's with your cardiologist or your primary care physician. You know, just see, do I need them every six months? Then traditionally they'll set them up for you at the end of your appointment, but... You know, just so you can get a timeline just to know what you're getting into. So it never hurts to ask them how often they want to see you. Uh, the next one you can ask if you're in this stage, your heart's got some issues. So you can always ask them what your ejection fraction and stroke volume is. And you can ask them what that is compared to normal. Um, if you want to know, we have an episode up on ejection fraction. You can watch that. That'll give you some basic numbers to go by. But it never hurts to see what your doctor considers normal. So... That's a good question to ask them. If you do have problems with your heart, like a reduced ejection fraction, you're probably going to need an echo or an echocardiogram every six months to a year, depending on you know how often they want to check that. So just ask them how often you should have that. That way, if you're getting scheduled for an appointment and you know it's due and somehow they miss that, you can let them know that you're due for one. That way you can stay on top of your care, which... Is definitely the best thing to do when you have any medical condition. Next, you can ask them, what exactly is wrong with my heart? You know, do I have a stiff heart? Is it enlarged? Do I have damage? You know, all that stuff. Know what's wrong with it. That way you can research your condition and better understand it. Ask them if there's any support groups in the area or if there's any offered by the hospital. I know the hospital around us has you know, certain groups for conditions that meet like once a month. So it never hurts to know this stuff. And if you're not a part of it, we do have a congestive heart failure support group on Facebook, which the link will be in the description. And that's always a good place to come and, you know, just chat with people, get some advice, um, find out different things about your condition, all that good stuff. You know, or you just have somebody to vent to, you know, get things off your chest that we all need to do, but... This is a good place for people that know what you're going through 
and they're going to listen and definitely be more empathetic to your condition than perhaps people that don't have any health problems like this as of yet. Next, you can ask if you need cardiac rehab. This is a good thing to help, especially after a heart attack. You know, sometimes they don't necessarily offer this to people and they don't know about it, but ask them if you can use some cardiac rehab. It's a good place where you do some light exercises. They have you on a monitor so they know if you're pushing yourself too hard, and they'll know if you do something that actually requires medical attention. So it's a good place to actually just kind of learn how to pace yourself and exercises, what your limits are. So I would definitely, if you can do that, I would recommend it. And then lastly, you can ask, do you want me to do any home monitoring of blood pressure, you know, heart rate, blood sugar, or any of that stuff? You know, this is something that could have been used. I didn't think about it when writing the episode for stage A, but in any stage, ask them what they want you to keep track of. And even if they say they don't, it's good to keep track of your blood pressure, heart rate, and all that stuff because you'll know if your medication's effective, you'll know if you need to go up on a dose, or if you've been making lifestyle changes and you can actually come down on your dose. So definitely keep track of that. It doesn't hurt. You know, it's essentially a one-time cost of the monitor, which they're not very expensive. And, you know, you'll get a lot of information out of that that you can't get just by, you know, guessing or hoping you know what's going on. So that's the end of this episode. If you found this episode helpful, you know, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. As always, I'd like for you to hit the like button because this helps the channel be found by other users on YouTube who are putting stuff into the search bar. This will bring the channel to the top. It'll also give them recommended videos to help them find any questions that they need answered. So if you found this information valuable, it really helps out if you just hit that like button. It only takes a few seconds, especially people on your phone. You can just tap that while you're watching the video. Um, as always, comment any questions you have about this video, or you can comment any topics you'd like to see in the future. I've got a ton of them planned, but if I have a request for certain ones by a lot of people, I'll move those up to the front of the list so that we can get your questions answered. And lastly, get out and enjoy life. Don't sit there and dwell over any conditions you have. We're all going to have them. We all grow old. We all get sick. Don't worry about that. You know, do what you need to do to stay healthy. But again, get out there and enjoy life. Way too short to be sitting around moping and dwelling on problems that, you know, you don't need to worry about that. So get out there, do that. As always, keep on smiling. Take care of yourself, and we will see you next episode for Stage C of Congestive Heart Failure.